the fake natty is the fitness industry's favorite villain. And the reason we love to hate them so much, because we do love it, is because they give the naive youth false hope and unrealistic expectations. After all, what could possibly be worse than thinking you're gonna get huge and then not getting huge? But there is another culprit guilty of this charge, albeit less intentionally, the genetically gifted Natty. You see, in some ways, these people could do more damage to the self-esteem of the gym newbie, because if they're not on steroids and you're not on steroids, then you should be able to achieve what they achieve, right? So if after 10 years of solid training, busting your ass, you look at your physique and realize that it's actually still nowhere near theirs, well, Obviously, that means that there's something wrong with you and you should consider a mild bout of self-loathing. So, just how much of a part does genetics play? I'm gonna talk about it. What does it mean to have good genetics for bodybuilding? The way I see it, we can break bodybuilding genetics down into three components. The first is skeletal structure and muscle insertions. This doesn't actually affect how much muscle you're gonna be walking around with, but it does affect the appearance of what you do have. Generally speaking, a lot of natural bodybuilders tend to be shorter in stature, but that more compact look serves to make them appear more muscular. But it's not just height, different bone lengths and ratios or muscle insertions can also create the illusion of increased muscularity, which means you're not big, but you look big, basically. Technically you are, it's the same thing. Man. The second is the rate at which one can build muscle. This is the important one. And that's quite self-explanatory. If multiple people undergo the exact same training protocol, the results are gonna vary wildly. And we've seen that in study after study with some showing a huge disparity in muscle gain over a relatively brief period. The third is the natural limit. This is the ceiling. How much total muscle could a person build with unlimited time under perfect conditions? This probably correlates quite strongly with the rate at which one can build muscle, but I don't think it's exactly the same thing. I have seen studies where certain participants make gains faster to begin with, but gains eventually even out. Simply put, even if one person gains muscle faster initially, the other might one day catch up. In a way, this is good because it means even if your gains aren't amazing in your first year, you might still eventually be able to hit quite a high peak. But this is also probably much less relevant than how fast you can build muscle in your first few years because practically most people aren't gonna get very close to their natural limit and wouldn't want to even if they could. We are victims of our own bias. Somebody with elite genetics might wanna downplay it so that they can attribute their gains to hard work whilst others are probably a bit too quick to discount that person's dedication and just assume that they don't have to try very hard. You might have a friend who you train with or even live with who blatantly puts in less effort than you but gets better results. Now, if you know their lifestyle intricately, you can probably make a fairly safe assumption that they have the superior bodybuilding genetics, but it's unlikely you know many people well enough to make this judgment. So you can only really gauge your genetics against one or two others, but not against the population as a whole. And if you and your friend both happen to have really good or really bad genetics, then your perception may still be quite warped. It's also hard to compare your own gains with that of any averages observed in studies, partly because you'd struggle to replicate the exact protocols enacted, but also because most bodybuilding studies are carried out either on trained or untrained subjects. But since we know that gains gradually diminish over time, you'd need some kind of information on precisely how trained these trained subjects are. Is it two years or is it 10 years? For example, in this study, some people saw lean body mass increases of over 2.5 kilograms in 10 weeks. But in order to be in the study, subjects had to have been lifting three to five times a week for at least six months. So that could be three times a week for six months, or it could be five times a week for six years. Without knowing, you can't really compare your gains to theirs. We can look at people that we think are genetically elite, like natural bodybuilders or 
the odd fitness YouTuber that we actually believe is Natty. And these are probably good examples of what it looks like when you combine great genetics with a lifetime of training. But that only tells us about outliers and it doesn't say much about where the average lies. We also don't really have examples of outliers at the other end of the scale because people with the very worst bodybuilding genetics don't tend to become fitness YouTubers or natural bodybuilders. If we look at this 12 week study looking at bicep size, we can see some kind of bell curve distribution appearing, but this is solely for biceps and we can't really assume that this would be true for total body hypertrophy. This brings me on to another point worth briefly mentioning. Although we've only spoken about variance between individuals, there also seems to be variance within individuals in that some muscles appear to respond better to weight training than others. Now, this might in part be that illusion of bone structure and muscle insertions, but it could also be down to the muscle fiber type makeup of specific muscle groups. Whatever the reason, most people find that after following a balanced program, although there's no real consensus on what that even is, certain muscles seem to get ahead and certain muscles lag behind. Once you notice this, you can obviously adapt your training to play to your strengths and weaknesses by reducing how many sets you do for those more responsive muscles and then increasing for those more stubborn muscle groups. So, where are you? In the real world, people aren't checking the progress of their bulk with bioelectrical impedance or DEXs or MRIs. Most people have a set of scales and a mirror they step on the scales, see how much weight they've gained, then look in the mirror, maybe grab their stomach a bit and try and judge whether a good proportion of that weight gain seems to be muscle. So the question when judging your own genetics is really how much weight was I able to gain over X period of time without getting fat? Now that is a very rudimentary, simplistic way of looking at it, but really the only way for most people We've seen untrained people gaining upwards of one pound per week in their first few months in multiple studies, but these are people who have never lifted before, going straight onto a well-designed training program, and often they even have supervisors literally watching them and helping them through every single set. Normal people cannot expect this. However, if we take some averages from the research and then try and account for some real world inefficiencies, AKA not being coached through every single set, then stretch it out over a year and assume gains will start to diminish at some point. It's certainly not unreasonable to say that with average genetics, most people should be able to gain 15 pounds in their first year with the majority of that seeming visually to be muscle. If you did that in your first year, you can safely assume that your genetics are at least good enough to obtain a great muscular physique somewhere in the five to 10 year time frame. Now, some of you will have gained more weight than that whilst remaining relatively lean and you've probably got above average genetics. How above? I'm not sure, right? But probably above. Some will have gained that much weight, but it seems to be predominantly fat, in which case maybe you have below average genetics. Maybe your training was just shit. This is the difficulty, right? And if you didn't gain much weight at all in your first year, it doesn't mean that you have bad genetics. It just means you probably didn't eat enough because 15 pounds of total weight gain in your very first year lifting is actually really reasonable for most people. If we look further down the line, you can probably just about half that each year. So after five years, you're looking at close to 30 pounds of weight gain, which should be vast majority, if not all muscle. I think this is actually quite conservative, but either way, if you stick 30 pounds of muscle, on pretty much any physique, it should be looking quite impressive. An interesting side note is this basic approximation for figuring out your genetic ceiling. In short, some dude looked at a shitload of data and he found that wrist and ankle circumference are pretty strong predictors of how much muscle a person can build naturally. Keep in mind that this would be over a lifetime of consistently optimal training and nutrition. My own calculation comes out at this. And given I'm currently here, but I'm a serial bulk avoider, I think that that probably seems reasonable were I to dedicate my entire existence to building muscle. My opinion is that although gains might be slower for some or peak at a lower level for some, pretty much everyone has good enough genetics 
to get a muscular, lean, athletic looking physique in their lifetime. Most people don't lift or they eat McDonald's every day or they smash eight pints on a Friday and then eight on a Saturday, a few on a Wednesday, or they do all of the above, right? So even if you have genetics in the bottom 10%, you can probably still get a physique in the top 10%. Now, of course, as the genetics get less favorable, you get less room for error. So just make sure you're doing all the basics right. Choose good exercises, rest between your sets, take them close to failure, apply progressive overload, take your creatine, eat your protein, get as much sleep as you can, and just keep turning up, right? The more consistent you are, the fewer people you're competing with and the less genetics will play a role. Jordan Lenny is my hero!